In this video, I'm going to discuss the common names of landmarks that you should familiarize yourself prior to memorizing the bones and landmarks of the skeletal system. So a landmark is a surface feature of bone, right? So all these grooves, indentations, holes, right? Pieces of bone that stick out. These are all called landmarks. They're surface features. And I've placed landmarks into four categories. One category is landmarks that are articulating surfaces. So they're part of a joint. The second category are landmarks that are projections for muscle attachment. These are pieces of bone that stick out and serve as attachment sites for muscles. The third category are landmarks that are depressions or openings. And then the fourth category is other. These are landmarks that don't fit the other categories. The first category of landmarks are landmarks that are articulating surfaces. They're part of the joints. And there are three landmarks that fall under this category. The first landmark is called a condyle. And a condyle is a large, rounded, articulating knob. So in this example, I have the femur. And looking at the distal end of the femur, you have this knobby end that sticks out. These are called condyles. The next landmark under this category is called the head. So again, looking at the femur, right? This area right here, this is called the head of the femur. A head is a prominent rounded articulating end of a bone. And the third type of landmark in this category is called a facet. A facet is a small articular surface. And the example that I've chosen is the atlas. This is cervical vertebrae number one. And when you look at the atlas, Right on the inside of this atlas by the vertebral foramen, you have this smooth, small, flat surface. This is called the articular facet for the dens process. The second category of landmarks are the landmarks that are projections for muscle attachment. So these are areas of bone where muscles attach to bone. And there are seven types of landmarks. So the first landmark is called a process. A process is a prominent projection or a piece of bone that sticks out. So the examples that I'm using here is a thoracic vertebrae. So on a thoracic vertebrae, this is called a transverse process, and this is called a spinous process. So you can see it's a piece of bone that sticks out. Another example of a process is on the ulna. So this piece right here at the end of the ulna, by the head of the ulna, this is called the styloid process. The second type of landmark is called the crest. And a crest is a narrow ridge-like projection. So here you have the pelvic bone, right? In this upper part of the pelvic bone here, this is called the iliac crest. The third type of landmark is what we call the spine. A spine is a sharp, slender process. So a couple examples of spine. So when you're looking at the facial bone, this here is called the nasal spine. And when we're looking at the scapula, right, this right here is called the scapular spine. The fourth type of landmark is called the trochanter. So a trochanter can only be found on the femur. So here again is the femur. And what we're looking for in terms of a trochanter is we're looking for a massive process found only on the proximal femur. So if looking at the femur, this end here is proximal, this end is distal. So the big, rounded, massive process that sticks out on the proximal end, that would be this one here. This is called the greater trochanter. And then you have this right here, which is called the lesser trochanter. The fifth type of landmark is called a tubercle. A tubercle is a small, rounded process. Examples of tubercles can be found on the humerus. Right? So here you're looking at the humerus. This is the proximal end of the humerus, and this is the distal end of the humerus. And if I show you the proximal end of the humerus, this small, rounded process right here is called the lesser tubercle. And this bigger, smaller, rounded process here, this is called the greater tubercle. The sixth landmark is called a tuberosity. A tuberosity is a large roughened process. So the example that I've chosen to show you in terms of a tuberosity 
is going to be the tibia. So on the tibia, on the anterior tibia, right, by the proximal end, you have this little bump right here. This right here is called the tibial tuberosity. Another tuberosity can be found on the radius. So here's the radius, and the tuberosity that we're looking at is this rough bump right here. This is called the radial tuberosity. And the last landmark in this category is called an epicondyle. So again, we will go back to the femur. And the epicondyles are a projection on top of or above the condyle. So remember, when looking at the femur, here you have a condyle, this large rounded projection. On the lateral con on the condyles, you have these tiny little bumps right here. This is called an epicondyle. So on the femur, you have the lateral epicondyle and you have a medial epicondyle. The next category of landmarks are landmarks that are depressions or openings. And there are four landmarks in this category. The first landmark is called a foramen. A foramen is a hole or rounded opening through the bone. So looking at the skull, on the inferior part of the skull, you have this large hole right here. This is called the foramen magnum. It's where the spinal cord exits. If we look at a vertebrae again, right? Again, if we look at a thoracic vertebrae, this is a vertebral foramen. If we look at a cervical vertebrae, right? You see a vertebral foramen, but you have these holes here called transverse foramen. The second type of landmark found in this category is called the meatus. The meatus is a tunnel or tube-like passageway through the bone. And there's only one meatus that you will be responsible for. And that is this tube-like passageway right here. This is called the external auditory meatus or ear canal. The third type of landmark in this category is called a fossa. And a fossa is a shallow indentation. So again, looking back at your pelvic bone, right? Looking at the pelvic bone, you can see this indentation right here, the shallow groove. This is called a fossa. In this case, it's called the iliac fossa. On the skull, right? On the skull, if I were to remove the jaw, the lower jawbone, you have this indentation right here. This is called the mandibular fossa. Okay, so a fossa means a shallow groove or indentation. So the last category is other. And other landmarks are landmarks that do not fit the other three categories. And there are two landmarks that fall under this category. So the first landmark in this category is called the body or shaft. So the body or shaft is the main part of a bone. So again, looking at a vertebrae, this main part of the vertebrae is what we call the body. If we were looking at a long bone, such as the humerus, this is called the shaft. And then the last landmark in the other category is the neck. So by definition, the neck is the area of bone between the head and the body or shaft of that bone. So again, going back to the humerus, right? So here's the shaft, here's the head of the humerus, and this right here is what we call the anatomical neck. If we look at the femur, so again, here's the femur, right? Here is the head of the femur, here is the shaft of the femur, and this right here, this would be the neck of the femur.